Hello, my name is Jennifer Guzman. I'm head of medical affairs strategy at Helix Smith, and I appreciate you taking the time today to watch this presentation on our company and our gene therapy products. Helix Smith is a public company, and there may be forward looking statements in this presentation. My presentation will start with a brief introduction to our company and pipeline, and then I will present our lead product in Genesis or VM202 to discuss the type of gene therapy product that it is, its biological activity, clinical applications, and several diseases. I will end my talk by explaining what kind of partnerships we're looking for through this conference. This slide summarizes the highlights of the company. Helix Smith has a strong platform in gene therapy and has developed a number of novel gene medicines using its own proprietary technologies. Secondly, we are a very active late stage clinical development company conducting phase three and phase two trials in the US. Thirdly, Helix, Helix Smith achieved many firsts with its flagship product called Agensis. It's the first gene therapy for pain to enter phase three trials, as well as neuropathic pain specifically. It was also the first gene therapy targeting a highly prevalent disease to receive RMAT status from the FDA. If our ongoing phase three produce satisfactory data, Ingensis has a good chance of becoming the first plasma DNA-based drug for humans. Helix Smith has been a public company since 2006 and is listed on the COSAC. Approximately 140 employees are working for the company. Of those, 120 are in Seoul, Korea, where our R&D and our headquarters are located. And we have about 20 people in the US, mainly in San Diego, where we have our clinical operations, medical, regulatory, and quality team. Helix Smith is a comprehensive gene therapy company based on three different delivery systems, plasma DNA, AAV, and retrovirus engineered T cells, or CAR-T. With our plasma DNA platform, we're targeting a variety of ischemic and neuromuscular diseases. With our AAVV program, we're focusing on several muscular diseases, including ALS, and with CAR-T, the emphasis is on solid tumors. In addition, we recently established a program devoted to ALS called DART. Through this program, three potential drug candidates are in development. This slide provides an overview of our extensive gene therapy pipeline. In addition to Ingensis, our plasma DNA product, this slide shows our CAR-T program and the several different types of solid tumors that we're targeting as well as our AAV vector program targeting neuromuscular diseases. And Genesis is the most advanced product in our pipeline. In addition to our study in diabetic peripheral neuropathy, it is also being studied in diabetic foot ulcers, claudication, ALS, which we have a phase two trial currently recruiting uh, patients, coronary artery disease, and Charcot Marie tooth disease, which we recently completed enrollment of this trial in Korea. We are also expecting several different candidates to enter phase one trials within two to three years, including for ALS, neuroblastoma, and ovarian cancer. We've developed a subsidiary called Cartex Cell, which was created to focus on our CAR T de development program. The technology uses a proprietary vector that we hope will show higher efficacy, safety, convenience, and lower costs than other CAR T treatments under development. Few CAR-T companies possess their own vector technology. Our proprietary system is designed to aid CAR-T in accessing the, accessing the tumor and allowing the vector to deliver a minimum of two or more genes. We are targeting four new INDs a year with our proprietary CAR library and screening system. We've also developed a subsidiary called Neuromyon, which focuses on our AAV vector technology. Our goal here is to have at least two products in clinical trials in the US by 2023. During the rest of my presentation, I will focus on Ingensis, its proposed mechanism of action based on our preclinical and clinical studies over the last three year, 10 years and different kinds of diseases that we're targeting. Ingensis is a plasma DNA designed to express two isoforms of hepatocyte growth factor. HDF was originally discovered as a growth factor for hepatocytes by Japanese scientists in mid-1980, but a few years later, it was found to contain multiple biological activities such as neurotropic, angiogenic, and anti-inflammatory activities, among others. 
and Gensys is delivered to skeletal or cardiac muscle cells, depending on the indication, by a simple intermuscular injection using a regular 27 gauge syringe or injection catheter as shown in this photo. Ingensis injections have the potential to produce multiple bioactivities and provide meaningful clinical benefits depending on the target indication. They include possible regeneration of the PMS neurons directly interacting with neurons or Schwann cells, possible production of anti neuroinflammatory activities by controlling the expression of pro inflammatory cytokines such as IL 6 and CSF1. Subsequent reduction of the number and change in the distribution pat pattern of activated microbial cells in the spinal cord. Reconstitution of damaged microvascular environment by HGF's angiogenic activities. Potential generation of long-term analgesic effects. And finally, possible improvement in muscle atrophy by regulating the expression levels of MIR206, HGAC4, atrogen-1, and MURF1, among others. DPN, our most advanced indication for ingensis, is one of the most frequently observed complications in diabetic patients. In the US alone, about 15% of diabetics, or about 4.2 million people, are known to suffer from painful DPN. And about 30% of those, or about 1.3 million people, are refractory in that no currently available drugs are working for them. The pain experienced by these patients is described as burning, throbbing, stabbing, and tingling. Current treatment methods are very limited. The most prescribed medicine for DPN patients is pergabalin or Lyrica, originally from Pfizer, followed by others like gabapentin and duloxetine. More than half of painful DPN patients end up using opioids. A recently published article in JAMA indicated that opioids were actually the number one prescribed medication for newly diagnosed DPN subjects in their survey of Mayo Clinic patients from 2014 to 2018. All currently approved medications for DPN only provide temporary pain relief and have low tolerability and side effects that severely compromise the quality of life for these patients. Sadly, about 40% of painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy patients remain untreated and have to live with the horrible levels of pain causing insomnia and depression, and in extreme cases, even suicide. This slide shows the history of our clinical trials for painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy over the last 10 years. In all the cases, Professor John Kessler at Northwestern University Medical School, a renowned neurologist, has overseen our trials. As shown on the left, ingensis is intermuscularly injected into the calf muscles for diabetic peripheral neuropathy. In our phase one and two trials, one treatment was given on day zero and day 14. After the phase two trial, one treatment was set to two cycles of ejections at two week intervals, eight milligrams per visit, four milligrams per leg, so 16 milligrams total. In phase three, two treatments were given, one at day zero and 14, and a second at days 90 and 104, the three month time point. We followed the patient's pain levels for 12 or nine months, depending on the protocol. The results of our previous phase three have just been published in clinical and translational science. The study was the first phase three gene therapy trial for pain. The phase three study was conducted in two parts, one for nine months, called VMDN-003 with 500 subjects and a three-month extension trial to 12 months, VMDN-003B, which consists of 101 subjects from the original 500. Ingensis, or placebo, was administered via undermuscular injection to the calf muscles of both legs in day zero and 14, and again on days 90 and 104 in the VMDN-003 study. The primary endpoint measured the change from baseline in the average 24-hour pain score at three months. In the extension study, VMDN-N-003B, the primary endpoint was safety, while the secondary efficacy endpoint was change in mean pain score from baseline to 12 months. VMDN-003 did not meet the primary endpoint. However, results from VMDN-003B, which are shown in this slide, show durable analgesic response relative to the placebo group that was maintained for eight months after the last injection. This suggests that VM202 treatment may ameliorate disease progression. Of the 101 subjects belonging to the intent-to-treat population who enrolled in VMDN-003B, 
reductions at 12 months in the primary efficacy measure, mean pain score changes from baseline, were observed for those who received intensives compared with the placebo group. In this extension study, analysis of earlier time points also revealed reductions in the 24-hour average pain scores at six months and nine months in the Ingensis group. Importantly, we also saw greater reductions in pain were found in subjects who were not on gabapentin or pergabalin during the 12-month study. This was consistent with our phase two study results. On the left, the effect of VM202 on pain severity in all subjects is shown. The arrows indicate two treatment cycles, one on day zero and 14, and another one three months later. We can see significant pain reductions at six, nine, and 12 months. On the right-hand side, you can see the effect in subgroups not on pergabalin and or gabapentin. Based on these results and the safety profile observed in all of our Ingensis studies thus far, we made the decision to proceed with two additional phase three trials with several operational changes. One is actively enrolling and the other is expected to start later this year. So throughout our phase one, two, and three studies, Ingensis appears to be safe showed potential for long-term analgesic effect, showed higher efficacy in patients not on pregabalin or gabapentin, two of the most prescribed drugs in this area. And these findings, if they can be replicated, have important implications for patients in the market. In addition, one of the most startling discoveries is that Invensis analgesic effect lasts more than eight months in the absence of the drug product and in the absence of hepatocyte growth factor gene expression. This indicates that Ingensis has the potential to change the course of disease progression. We propose that Ingensis works through repairing damaged nerves and changing the pain circuit in a fundamental way. Based on the data from our clinical trials, as well as our animal studies, Ingensis did receive RMAT designation from the US FDA in 2018. RMAT is one of the five expedited review programs together with Fast Track, Breakthrough Therapy, priority review, and accelerated approval. RMAT designated therapies can enjoy all the benefits of fast track and breakthrough. Ingensis for DPN was the first and still is the only therapy with an RMAT designation for pain. It was also the first therapy with an RMAT designation for a highly prevalent disease and is still one of only two gene therapies with RMAT designation for a prevalent disease, the other being Parkinson's. So as I mentioned, we have started our second phase three, VMDN-003-2, and are planning to start a third phase three later this year. The two trials are very similar. We are targeting subjects with painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy, not on pergabalin or gabapentin. Both are adaptive designs with 150 to 250 subjects in size, involving approximately 15 sites across the US. There'll be two treatment cycles, each starting on day zero and day 90, and the primary endpoint is pain reduction at six months. The only difference between the second and third phase three is that in VMDN-003-2, we collect 12 month safety data after ending the six month efficacy study, while VMDN-003-3 is a 12 month study measuring both safety and efficacy after 12 months. So in addition to DPN, Ingensis is being developed for other indications in which hepatocyte growth factor CMET signaling plays important roles in disease progression. As I mentioned earlier, we do have an ALS phase two that's actively recruiting in the US, a phase one for CMT, which will be completed in September this year, and we're conducting a phase three for diabetic foot ulcers and a phase two for claudication associated with peripheral artery. So in summary, I hope I was able to convey that HelixSmith is a dynamic platform company armed with a robust gene therapy pipeline. We're a late stage clinical development company with particular strength in neuropathy, pain, and neuromuscular disease. Our lead product to Gensis being tested for six different indications. The most advanced program is for painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy. And Gensis has demonstrated therapeutic potential in two double blind placebo controlled studies a phase two and the extension trial of our first phase three. And most importantly, it's shown potential as a regenerative medicine. The second phase three for DPN has started and the third phase three will begin soon. 
In addition, Helix Smith has recently established our DART program devoted to the development of ALS therapeutics. We are proud that Helix Smith is at the forefront of the fight against ALS. This slide provides an overview of potential partnerships that we're exploring. For our lead candidate, Ingensis, we're interested in a global licensing partner as well as select local partnerships. We are flexible in deal structure, whether all or select indications. And in addition, we're actively looking for clinical phase joint venture partnerships for clinical or IND ready assets in pain, neuromuscular diseases, or cardiology. We're also open to early phase collaborations to use our delivery systems or with new gene therapy delivery technologies. Thank you so much for your time today.